Hey everybody, it's Felisa and this is going to be a podcast. Now, I want to make sure that I give this disclaimer before I get started. These are my ideas, my thoughts, my rants, my observations. They may or may not resonate with you. Um, I hope that we can have some reasonable dialogue because I am interested in learning and understanding. But I am aware that we won't always agree on all matters. And as long as we can do a disagreement tastefully, respectfully, I'm all for it. So having said that, today I wanted to talk about the terms simp and pygmy. Now, admittedly, I have struggled with understanding like a true definition because to me, they're now starting to be thrown around in every conceivable context, in every conceivable way. Just like the term narcissist is now starting to be thrown around and also empath. Everybody ain't an empath. Everybody is not a narcissist. Everybody is not a simp and everybody is not a pick me. I think, you know, I'm starting to see those terms being applied to people who just simply agree with the popular opinion and can see, you know, the plight of the opposite gender. Now, if you're not familiar, the term simp is, um, according to Urban Dictionary, because I have to kind of define it, like I have my own idea of what it possibly could mean, but I wanted to read this definition. So this is what it's saying. It's basically someone who gives redundant and over-the-top attention to women that are of far less value than the attention or praise given. So, you know, when I hear that and when I read that, like I I immediately take offense, especially when I know that the term simp had been applied to Russell simply because, you know, he was dating and he decided that he wanted to wife Ciara. I don't know what Ciara has done to all of these men, but I promise you, I've never seen so many men go out of their way to declare this to declare this woman unworthy, you know, that she's this and she's that. They've called her a passer on, they called her all kinds of things. And I mean, a lot of it has just been, na- I mean, like super nasty. And, you know, saying that Russell, you know, shouldn't be giving her this. I mean, like, I've never seen so many men, like count the money in another man's pocket, the way that I've seen people count Russell's money and, you know, have an opinion as to what he does with it or, you know, how he showers um, attention, praise or adoration on his wife. I don't know what this man has done to earn this. They appear very happy to me every time I've seen pictures. Now, of course, pictures can be misleading. They haven't had me over for dinner in ever. And so I don't know the inner working of their relationship. I also don't know Ciara. So I can't call into question her character or her behavior. But here's the thing. If that man has decided that she is worthy of marriage and she's worthy of, you know, earning his hard earned money and, you know, his, his, his praise and adoration, all the kind of stuff. And he feels that the trade-off in terms of what she's giving him um, is equally as valuable as what he's giving her. I don't see the problem. I really don't. Maybe you wouldn't function that way in your relationship. You wouldn't give your woman those kinds of things or, you know, whatever. Um, But that's you and you have a right to, you know, you know, perform or behave or, you know, modify your relationship as you see fit. But I never really could understand the hatred that was levied at this couple and particularly this woman, especially when I think about, you know, yes, I know that, you know, Kim Kardashian has gotten her fair amount of pushback and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But aside from people calling Kanye crazy, probably for other reasons than him just being married to Kim, I've never seen anybody call him a simp. Now, maybe I just overlooked it. I want to make sure that I'm on the record of saying that. I don't read everything and I don't know everything. But, you know, just in the court of public opinion, like Kim had a whole sex tape, had a whole, I mean, she's been with lots of dudes in the industry. Um, and I, I don't call into question her, uh, her sexual past. I mean, she's lived her life the way that she's lived her life and that is her business, but that did not stop somebody from seeing value in her and deciding that they wanted to take it to the next step, the next step being marriage. So I've never seen that, or I, and I've never seen that lobby that Wiz Khalifa either when it came to Amber. I mean, Amber Rose had her own history, her own, whatever. I've never seen, um, uh, offset be called a simp, you know, because of Cardi. And I mean, this man walked out on the stage and decided that his marriage was worth it and he was about to go get his good thing. He was not about to let her go. Like he knew he effed up. And while I have my own thoughts and opinions about showing up at somebody's job and interrupting them in that manner, in that way, she apparently appreciated it. And she decided that she wanted to give him another chance. I never saw anybody call him a simp. So I find it odd. I really do. And I don't want to state the obvious, but I find it odd that Russell is getting all of this simp work, whereas none of these other dudes 
um, who have their own questionable past, uh, their own questionable past, questionable, excuse me, past. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the the recipe that the men have to have just as much as a, of a questionable past as the men as the women. Um, Russell did not seem to have a problematic past. I never heard anything about him. But again, you know, I don't necessarily follow sports, so maybe I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but I'm just kind of calling into question, you know, that. And then as it pertains to like Derek Jackson, I want to make sure that I'm on the record. I don't follow him. I've seen clips and things, you know, where he's been talking. I don't follow Steve Harvey either. I full disclosure, I did buy his first book and I took it right back to buy Barnes and Noble. It was so basic and so full of, you know, like, I don't know, just, just common sense level stuff to me until I didn't find it particularly revelatory nor insightful. But that doesn't mean that other women couldn't and it doesn't mean that other women didn't and obviously it made him, you know, richer than he already was because it was a, a bestseller. And I think he did a follow-up book. I have no idea. But I, I, I think that he did a follow-up book or something along those lines. So I don't begrudge them from finding like a niche and, you know, doing some empowerment or some encouragement or what have you. I What I've heard from other men is that, you know, it's problematic when you never hold um, the, the group that you're celebrating and you're encouraging accountable. Um, and you never hold them, their foot to the fire. Now, I've heard bits and pieces and times where, you know, all of them, John Gray included, where they've had you know, come to the river kind of conversations as it pertains to women, maybe not as often to make it balanced. And maybe that is why they are referred to as simps. Now, when it comes to a pick me, obviously, you know, I am of the female persuasion. I am of the female gender. I've been a woman all my whole life. So I know what it's like to be contained in this body and have to live and navigate this world as a woman. And so, you know, pick me behavior um, or what is thought to be pick me behavior, you know, in my opinion, is just the female version of a simp, you know, someone who is constantly celebrating and, you know, encouraging and, and taking the side, I guess to say, I don't, I guess just the side um, of men, um, irrespective of, of the situation and, and what's happening. <sighs> I don't know that um, I'm so bothered by that as much as I am intrigued because, you know, the, the prevailing school of thought among women, just like it is among men, you know, like men think that simps, simp, <laughs> men think that simps are simping in order to get in the pants of women, you know, to either get in their bed or their good graces or, you know, to show themselves chivalrous or what have you. And it gives them kind of an in um, to women and, you know, um, a way for them to kind of infiltrate or what have you, you know, they, they develop like this cult following. I don't know about the sex part. I really don't. <laughs> I don't, maybe it's working for somebody, but I've never really especially been turned on because I heard John Gray speak. Like I've never been like, Ooh, child, I can't wait till I like, no, not yeah, That's not a thing. I've never been turned on because I hear, you know, I'm, I'm, um, encouraged. Yes. When I hear empowering things about women, yes. You know, or acknowledgement of the hurt and the crap that we've been through. Absolutely. Like th that's very nice to hear an acknowledgement of pain and suffering or what have you. But I don't think that that's a panty dropper. Like I really don't. And I don't know who that's working for. Like I, re I really would like to sit down and talk to you and figure out like what you're doing. Cause yeah, that don't, that, that, that just don't do it for me. But maybe I am an anomaly myself. Maybe I'm kind of like an outlier and, and, you know, maybe, you know, everybody else is unduly um, persuaded and sexually aroused by that. That's just not my, yeah, you got to do a little bit more than just lip service. Um, but similarly, you know, a lot of women think that pick me's uh, are, you know, siding with men and, you know, supporting men and, you know, doing all these displays in order to gain favor and, um, you know, kind of to gain I don't know, curry, uh, you know, acknowledgement and, you know, give themselves a leg up. Here's what I believe, though. The average person, male or female, is pretty savvy. 
pretty insightful. And I just don't believe that any man that is looking for something more than just, you know, sex and, or, you know, romp in the, in the bed or whatever is really going to want somebody that's a sycophant because that's what we're really talking about here. We're really talking about sycophants. We're really talking about, you know, people who are so far up in the behinds of somebody that they can taste their breakfast. Someone who does not have the insight and the ability to have a backbone to call somebody on the carpet for their behavior, whether it's their same sex gender or opposite gender. We're really talking about someone who is in and of themselves um, so weak and so broken until the validation and the approval of somebody else makes them feel something, makes them feel like, you know, they are, you know, they've arrived or that, you know, they are somehow um, making a difference and that they're selected. I don't know that, um, you know, it, it gives them the advantage that they think that it does. I don't know. I could be wrong. And maybe somebody will leave, you know, some examples down in the comments. But even if it gives them an advantage, they it only gives them an advantage with that person. For, you know, people who, you know, are kind of doing this guru, this relationship or whatever, it gives them an advantage, you know, monetarily or, you know, they, like I said, develop a, a following or whatever. And maybe that is the payoff, you know, that they continue to do this or push that narrative. But don't everybody do something like that? I mean, just to make sure, I mean, whether you're running a Facebook group or, you know, whether you are trying to sell merchandise, whether you're trying to get on as an artist, whether you are trying to, you know, build a, 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 a business, you know, there's a fair amount of cheek kissing and, you know, schmoozing that you do. I'm not saying that you have to compromise your core principles or your core, you know, your fundamental, um, belief system but i do think that there's a fair amount of withhold like you don't say everything that you really believe because you want yeah i want a mortgage for my business or i want you know business partners so you play up the positive aspects of whatever it is and you kind of downplay the weak side until you can gain a position of power i think that that's the human dynamic and i think that we've all played that game i really do but one thing that really caught my eye and I do want to read like an excerpt. This was a post that I saw, which is what sparked this whole podcast. Um, because I read that and I thought, oh my Jesus, you know, like, oh my damn. Okay, so um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I will say, now this is in reference to Pygmies. And this was from another woman. Um, she said, pick me's don't always want to be picked by a man, though. Their ultimate goal is just to receive any form of male validation, no matter who or what type of man the approval is coming from. Their loyalty is to men. They take up for men at the expense of women. Just like a coon or an Uncle Tom in the context of race, a pick me is a self-hating woman who defends and co-signs toxicity at a woman's expense. Pick me's are at their final form are analogous, analogous to canines. They are domesticated bees, which is why it's proper to talk to them as the subordinates that they truly are. They are female dogs. Like a dog, they are loyal to their masters. They are man's best friend, which is why it is not possible for them to ever possess any loyalty to women or even themselves. They do not center women's best interests. They are the lap dogs for men. This is also what makes the, the pick me be a dangerous animal. And then she goes on to say that these type of women, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't want to read all these curse words because um, I do want to make sure I don't get any strikes on my channel. But, you know, kind of paraphrasing, she goes on to say that, you know, these type of women are the ones that will allow their daughters to be abused by their boyfriends and their husbands, and they will allow their children to suffer in poverty just to not put their children's father on child support. They call their daughters fast. <laughs> um, they prioritize the men in their life over their own children. They are rape apologists. They are victim blamer, blamers. They, are, they internalize self-hatred, um, and that prevents them from being the women that they could be. And they're toxic and an actual enemy to women and children. She said a mouthful. But I did, like, I found that interesting. It was fascinating to read that because those type of women do exist. Here's my thought process, though. Those aren't pick me's. That is a malignant form of womanhood. It is a perversion of what women are supposed to be and who women are. I think that we can all agree that women, just like men, just like human beings, exist on a spectrum. I just had a whole conversation in another group um, because there are some women that are in there that are mad <laughs> that um, they have to work 
you know, and that they feel like they took a L because of feminism and things like that. And they want to return to the grand old, old days. And my personal, my personal opinion was, you know, that reminds me very much of slaves who were set free. And then all of a sudden they got to longing for the plantation because they didn't understand life outside the plantation. There's a certain type of psychology that goes along with that. I don't know that that's pick me behavior. And I kind of think that it's dangerous to mishmash it like that. These type of women are malignant in their thinking. They're nefarious in their intent. They have no loyalty, not even to the men that they purport to support. These women have a deficit that has nothing to do with want to, wanting to be selected. These women are psychologically damaged and traumatized and they, they are in a category in and of themselves. Any woman that would allow, or a man actually, any woman or man who would allow someone to come in and abuse their children, allow their children to suffer um, because they don't have the tools or the resources to do anything better and it's far easier for them to select the role less traveled and do nothing um, than to actually be spurned into action. Um, there's, that's a whole different kind of category. And so I don't view, like, I did think that her thoughts were pretty salient, but I don't know that they're necessarily connected in that way. I would categorize those type of women. And again, I want to stress men as something completely different. Um, it is like, you know, those people are like the cancer on the butt cheeks of, you know, other men and women, you know, this is kind of like a subsection that really does have some, a fair amount of issues and a fair amount of, um, psychological trauma that need to, first of all, be dealt with. And I promise you that at the root of all of that is some type of childhood neglect, some type of childhood trauma, some type of childhood, um, I don't know, something where they've grown up and they've really internalized a lot of the issues that occur to them and this is the way that it's manifesting. I'm not making an excuse for it. I'm just saying that it's very important. Just like I think it's a very important and when I first started talking about narcissism and narcissists, I'm going somewhere. Let me bless you. And when I first started talking about narcissism and narcissistic behavior, I didn't separate the two. And so, you know, a lot of what I experienced in my relationships um, you know, came at the hands of narcissism and narcissistic behavior, irrespective of, you know, that it wasn't a diagnosable, it wasn't diagnosed. Now on this side of understanding and training and awareness, you know, I'm not willing to always categorize someone as a narcissist. People do have narcissistic tendencies, narcissistic behavior, but being a narcissist has specific characteristics it's a diagnose it's a personality disorder it's a mental health condition and so when we start just kind of throwing it around i think that we dilute the term and it becomes meaningless and i think that that's kind of where we are now not that simple and you know pick me have great connotations to it because they don't but i think you know just sweeping everyone in the, into kind of like this category and making it so that everything that these people do is with nefarious intent instead of at least on its face judging and saying you know what these people have a different opinion these people you know come from a different you know place in their life and their awareness and their overall perception than I do. We just don't agree on that. That's one thing. Then you do have people who are sycophants and they're just like, you know, hey, I'm going to latch on to this the best way that I can. I'm going to ride this wave until I, I got to get off. You know, those people will never tell anyone, you know, anything different because it disrupts their life. And then you have, you know, other people who are kind of in the middle. I think it's just kind of like all over the place, you know, at the end of the day, do I think that simp and pick me behavior is problematic? It could be, depending on what it is. Um, you know, I allow myself to get roped into one very terse exchange one time. And after that, I'm like, you know what? This person is a one trick pony. This is all they ever talk about. It's meaningless. It has no value. And it's triggering. And it's triggering for a reason. So, you know, let me stay away from these conversations. Everything else, I could care less. Well, I shouldn't say care less. That's not a proper term. I don't care. I really don't. Those people exist and will attract those people that, you know, they want and that they, you know, feel comfortable with in their lives. And any man that's attracted to that kind of behavior is not the man for me because, child, I do not kiss ass. It is an acquired taste and I've never acquired that taste.
Y'all let me know what y'all think below. You know, do I have the terms right? Am I thinking about it properly? What has been your experience when you've heard those terms? You know, how are you feeling? Do you use those terms? Um, and if so, what context do you use them in? I'd be interested to know your thoughts and your feedback. Until next time, I will talk to y'all later. Bye.